Welcome all to a Sunday night special coffee with dragon an emergency cup of coffee on the topic of the trade war between the world's greatest biggest that is producer of goods and exporter of goods China and the world's biggest market consumer buyer of goods that is the United States of America at the beginning of the year the trade war was begun initiated by Trump and his administration by the imposition of tariffs on Chinese goods it was um, in two sets which the last set happened about three and a half months ago and it's over or on 200 billion worth of goods in the ranges of ranging between about 8 and 13 percent on different goods so totaling of more than 20 billion dollars the equivalent on those 200 billion averaging about 10 percent with some exemptions on some goods this is a huge huge of course big big amount at the macro level I'm going to cook in 10 minutes and um, it's real life unedited uncensored I will cook for those curious some special dragon beef with onions and carrots and special spices Schwartz is Hebrew special spices from Montreal here to Schwartz's famous deli since 1920s here in Hawk Island so what I want to address is the relationship now that between these two factors that trade war trade dispute and the imposition of tariffs and by the way China has counterimposed tariffs on certain products the United States US goods in response to of course the United States imposing tariffs on Chinese goods now you have to understand the macro level because these two the United States that is of America and the China China being respectively the China being the world's greatest biggest that is producer and exporter of goods to the world markets and the United States being the main buyer importer of goods from the world exporting and producing market you have the biggest have to visualize this that relationship the biggest market buying market and the bigger the seller market so buying and selling right you have the biggest seller in terms of the at the macro level of course on the world economy the biggest seller people's republic of china and the biggest buyer the United States of America also of course the bigger by buyer meaning importer and China by seller meaning exporter and of course by de facto producer of goods so these are interrelated and basically the same right just stated in other words well because technically one can be the biggest producer but not necessarily the biggest exporter but this is the case for China there the biggest producer the biggest exporter and of course that's the biggest seller in the world economy yeah. since the beginning of the year these two have been locked in a trade war right? because of the tariffs in position so you got the biggest market in the world buyer market in the world which in the world integrated economy United States with China our biggest seller so buyer and selling buying and selling because buyer biggest seller China and it's affected the whole world and now Canada is of course as allies of the United States that also have trade relationship and business with China we have a thriving and a big Chinese community of course in my local hometown of Montreal Hawk Island I have a Chinatown here often myself go Chinatown too and have in the past 
hopefully a peaceful relationship and will continue in the future for goods and dining and culture of course culture or although China of course is not a big exporter of its culture China has a very rich culture the other day I was watching a great movie called The Great Master about Chinese Kung Fu arts. It was so well done, just well, well done, very powerful music, dialogue, scenery. It was just, it showed you the part of the Chinese culture, which was, has to do with martial arts. China has a culture, I'm an advocate and a defender of good Sino-North American relations, cordial, harmonious, and peaceful relationships. I'm going to repeat, as an LGBTQ world citizen, I'm a defender, advocate, and propose peaceful, cordial, and harmonious relation, North, Sino-North American relationships, relationship, right? We have to achieve balance, harmony. Of course, there must be some level of justice and fair play. But now with this confusing matter, meaning the arrest in Canada by Canadian authorities, the RCMP, the so-called Mounties, which is our federal police, sort of like the FBI in the United States, Royal Canadian Mounted Police. It's called Royal because we still have um, de facto, semi-official if you want, representative or more symbolic relationship with the Crown of England. I'm not going to those matters because they're more symbolic, traditional, and historic. But nonetheless, so the RCMP Royal mounted because some of them are on horses. Still, <laughs> Royal Canadian Mounted Police are our um, sort of like federal police. But, uh, they're not provincial, meaning because we have provinces instead of states in Canada and territories. 13, pro 10 provinces and 10 territories. I'm not going to ge geographics of Canada because another cup of coffee for that. Canada is the second largest biggest geographical nation state. And so that's for another cup of coffee. But since it's Sunday and the world, the markets have fallen. Asia and the um, United States on Friday, a few hundred points, close to 500 points. Then Nikkei in Japan and the Dow Jones, North America, and other markets have been severely and negatively affected. Some see in semi, because there's other correlations and other than this, but because of the arrest of Huawei's chief financial officer, Kath, also known as Kathy or Rebecca Meng, who's the daughter actually of the founder. Ren, Ren Khruf, Ren Feng, um, mispronounced perhaps not intentionally, of course. But Mr. Ren Zhen Feng founded uh, Huawei in 1986, just big telecommunications, multinational. From my understanding, it's not a corporation in the sense that we understand it, from what I understand, and calling for more understanding, and again, as a world LGBTQ citizen. I'm calling for a peaceful, cordial, and harmonious Sino-North American relationships with China. So hopefully this will be resolved by tomorrow morning in a peaceful, cordial way. But reality and uh, egos and perhaps a little bit of chauvinism and uh, nationalism and on both sides, unfortunately. And uh, of course, Western chauvinists who... XYZ and my brothers and sisters across Canada, United States of America who try to understand also what's going on and investigate so we could maybe hint God some truth, light for some more truth. So Correlation of her arrest on December 1st, now almost two weeks later, as the markets have been negatively affected in e Asia and um, the United States, North America, of course, falling generally in the past two weeks, um, averaging a fall of about uh, an averaging in the hundreds of points. Now, one day they were they rebounded 
few hundred points but then the next day it was a fall again now this is ongoing of course and of course Canadians to worry situation since um, I understand that a second Canadian national Michael Colrig and uh, another one by the name of Michael uh, something Michael two Michaels Michael Colrig and uh, another Michael have been gone missing and there one is an entrepreneur the other one is another Canadian national who has um, gone missing and uh, it's an ongoing investigation what happens well he's being detained in China by Chinese authorities we don't know the allegation X and Y and Z what's happening because Chinese authorities have been of course asking for Meng's immediate release Kathy Meng the chief financial officer of Huawei now we must understand that Huawei is a very source of, of, of pride Contentment for for a lot of Chinese. Now this is true. We're gonna investigate. I've read something supposedly. There's some partial truth to this. Huawei is employee owned, meaning it's not entirely a corporation, but it's self-described as more of a collective enterprise. So you can imagine that this is very different. It's like um, maybe it's sort of a cooperative with supposedly the founder only owing less than 1.5 percent of the corporation of the business of the multinational telecommunications company less than 1.5 percent and that its employee owned and it has become the largest chinese telecommunications equipment maker and supposedly the, the world's biggest telecommunication equipment maker and in terms of smartphone selling and even production of smartphones and selling it became the second last year in November 2017 you know it took Apple Samsung was the first and Apple and others and Huawei just kept emerging and became a big 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 source of pride of employment of, of, of business so we must also understand that part now what really happened and now the accusations of course if they're true it's alarming and what compensation what can be done for them to let's say remedy the situation if that's the case the allegations are of course that there was a company called Skycom which was actually Huawei it was like a subsidiary financial arrangement what have you that did business with Iran in contra um, going against these sanctions of the United States and the allies imposed on Iran right which several sanctions because of Iran's uh, continuing uh, threats against uh, the West and Israel and so if that's true that can certainly pose a problem right and we have to to look at XYZ problems if that's the case if that really happened now there's another allegations going about the um, some even Democrats Republicans who have made in the United States allegations of espionage Huawei being uh, involved in espionage for the Chinese Communist Party the ruling party of the People's Republic of China of course the People's Republic of China is uh, a one-party state uh, from my understanding they have elections albeit the ones that do present themselves for elections are all members of the Communist Party of China with their own sets sets of ideas for economic development social development and what they call um, and the harmonious society they place a lot of value on a society that is harmonious first uh, as a primary one of the primary emphasis cultural emphasis and social emphasis and this political emphasis is the emphasis on harmony between the individual and the collective 
between the individual and the collective. Now we can discuss, and myself personally can write an essay, a thesis upon just this part, how, where, what, what, and X and Y and Z, but that will require much more coffee than financially can afford at the present moment in time, so please uh, do give, make a donation so I can get a uh, big bag, a kilo of coffee, fair trade, fair and free trade. So the, the problems that have risen are not just, of course, stock market based. Or financial based because let's be honest who owns the stock market it's mostly now although there's a lot of people who own stocks the majority of the shares of the stock market are just owned by either institutions such as big financial organizations investment organizations such as Berkshire Hathaway of Buffett Warren Buffett investment banks and such or their own through mutual funds but the majority of the shares of individuals are very capital holding individuals in, in, in wealth holding individuals so myself personally I'm now worried about the stock market from a personal interest or a private interest perspective do not own shares at the present moment in time of no corporation public national international corporation whatsoever the fact a humble world LGBTQ citizen, a philosopher, poet, artist, a universal spiritual teacher, social uh, advocate for social, spiritual, political, and international reform. So do not own shares. At the moment I'm actually struggling financially at the present moment in time with some debt. So, but nonetheless, by the stock market falling and going down, job creation is affected because of direct investment or foreign, what's called FDY in international finance, foreign direct investment, thus by extension affecting investment in arts and culture, which will affect me, of course, and other artists or songwriters, singers, producers of movies, theater. For example, I've just went to uh, experience last week a beautiful free piece here in Montreal neighborhood. And uh, it was beautiful. We have weekly culture, beautiful piece of art. It was dance, it was music, it was something. So, as a supporter of, of arts and culture, that's definitely one point. Will be affected, right? The prices of goods will go up. This affecting again those whose jobs, the majority whose jobs, whose salaries have been stagnating, whose uh, don't have dividends returning or investments or profit, right? The profits of the businesses. Some do have smaller businesses and they have a little bit of profit, but nonetheless, um, the big business. So it affects, in other words, the little guys and girls, my bros, sisters and sisters, bros. Thus, solutions, anybody, solutions. Because, first and foremost, it's troubling, especially the troubling, uh, it's a troubling allegations of uh, espionage. Now, as you give the benefit of doubt to all, always give people a second chance, and even as in not a fan of baseball, but do appreciate the three strike rule although even then in matters of discernment the level of gravity of the punishment should be in concordance with the level of the, of the crime of course if you stole a piece of bread to, to eat with uh, some salami support and you say okay stole the bread here you're, you're hungry okay take the bread here stole the full bread Cut it, give you half, just half of the salon. Let's go eat. Nonetheless,
the spying allegations are definitely worrying. Because if it's if it did happen, it did occur, who knew who was involved? Perhaps the directors, board of directors of Huawei did not know and it happened of course covertly. It's a big problem if that happened. What resolutions to that peaceful so that we can move forward and not become a conflagration of conflict and war and strive towards peace. But if that happened, of course, it's, it's a big problem. These are also now unproven allegations. Just as with, uh, the arrest of Kathy Meng in Vancouver, Canada. Now, I'm facing an extradition to the United States. Who the warrant was, of course, the arrest for her was issued in New York because of the um, alleged Iran affair. It's a big mess. It's a big mess. A lot of the public in China is very angry, very angry. And of course, a lot of people don't know if it really happened, right? Was it? What's going on exactly? Let's try to discern. One, if they did business with Iran, then we must know what did they sell them, how, what, if it's capability of Iran, whose regime to wage war, you know, on our allies. And that's a problem that should be dealt with, right, it's just Israel, right? if you, I've been threatening to attack and destroy Israel and America to wipe them off the map, the regime, which is a problem, straightforward, it's a big problem for us, here's North Americans, right, but not with the Iranian people, who might interact very friendly and they want the regime change themselves to open up, anyways, Iran's not the issue, but well, it is, of course, in many ways, directly with this affair. So anyways, uh, worst case scenario of all this happening is that uh, the, this week when the markets open in a few hours, in an hour in, in Asia, China is, um, the downturn continues in the stock market. There is if it's gonna be a stock market crash I what I'm calling the Xmas Christmas crash I'm not saying yes 100% it's a possibility the Christmas crash stock market crash true could trigger a global financial panic which could spawn a worldwide economic collapse that is the worst case scenario it could be it could be just a st probability that it's just gonna be a stock market downturn maybe a panic and a severe downturn triggering a recession without the worst case scenario of a worldwide economic collapse right just the stock market keep going down now now without necessarily a crash meaning a crash of the stock market will go down a considerable more than 37% or what have you in just a few days or what have you, right? The Christmas crash. It's the worst case scenario that will trigger financial, global financial crisis which could spawn the worldwide economic collapse. Let's wish for peace, security, harmony. 